You are now listening to FMB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FMB Radio. My name is Lindsay Collins, and I am in your bushes, picking your blackberries like a little snake in the grass. I'm also your host. Thank you for listening and for being here. But I've been on my neighborhood walks with the kids because we're actually having a spring for the first time in maybe maybe a while, or at least an extended spring. Like it feels really nice outside for a really long time. Where normally in South Carolina it gets it just goes from like cold and rainy to summer. Um, but everywhere I walk in my neighborhood. And I've lived in this neighborhood for five years. I've never noticed it. Maybe I just haven't opened up my consciousness enough to nature. (laughs) I'm a little bit of an indoor cat. Um, But I went out on a walk with the kids and I found these little patches of berries. And I was like, these are wild blackberries, which happen to be, I don't know, one of the most underrated berries in my experience. At least growing up, I was like, all right, a strawberry, 100% the most appealing berry. Close second would be a raspberry, but we don't really get those here. And then blackberries, I've always just been kind of like, why? They're kind of bitter. They're not that sweet. They're a little bit acidic. But boy, was I wrong about blackberries. I just never had a really good one. I've had the ones in the grocery store that just have that weird seed in them that everybody hates and you feel like you broke a tooth, which is my biggest fear. Uh, But these are so beautiful. And I've never noticed this many before. We were on our walk and I was like, whoa, hold on, hold on. Here's a patch. And we started picking them and I filled up like a little shirt. You know, I like pulled up my shirt and dropped some in. And then we went on our way and I was like, that's sweet. Like I could make like one small tiny tart but it really wasn't enough to do anything with. And so I just washed them and put them in the fridge. And then the next day we we're on our walk and it was like the mother load, like a long stretch of chain link fence along the easement. So somebody tell me, some realtor out there, tell me if I'm doing something illegal. Like I'm not in their yard. I haven't walked on their property. Uh, I'm just like on the side of the road on their property. I think it's called an easement. My experience in real real estate tells me it's an easement. But the chain link fence runs along probably, I don't know, 30 feet. And it's just a blackberry infestation. Like it, there's so many that I'm like, oh my God. And when you're looking for berries, it's like you think there's not that many. It's kind of a metaphor for life. And then all of a sudden you you look closer and once you're looking for them, they're everywhere. And we filled up... Luckily, I don't know why Julian had this in his uh, bike. He has a he has a milk crate that he attached to the front of his bike, which I think is so great. He's just very um, ingenuous it's like that. So he has this giant black milk crate um, zip tied onto his bike. And he was like, don't worry, mom, I got this. And it was these little plastic containers. We filled up, I'm serious, like truly two pints. No, two quarts of blackberries, just the sweetest, juiciest, sun-ripened blackberries. Yes, that's a a Bath and Body Works reference, if you're really paying attention. (laughs) And I know it's raspberry, but I just like to say sun-ripened blackberry, not sun-ripened raspberry. Um, It was exquisite. I... I had the best time. So I don't know why my phone's blowing up right now. I'm really not that popular. But then all of a sudden, as soon as I try to do anything for myself, people are like, hey, you, you up? Um, it was amazing. And I have just been blown away at the idea of... <laughs> hold, hold your nose while I say this, but foraging. The stuff that is already around that grows that people don't even take the time to look at. Um, and one of my favorite, a former F&B radio guest and one of my favorite follows, Young Kombucha 420, she's always up in like Rhode Island and cool places like that, Maine foraging. And I thought that was just for them, but there's so much to forage here from mushrooms to berries to herbs. And I've just been really like uh, wanting to get close to nature. 
Maybe it's because I'm a Taurus and it's almost my birthday. We're an earth sign, you know, and we like treats, luxurious treats. But yeah, I was on, my whole family was like on the side of this chain link fence picking berries and this man in a truck rolled up and was like, you guys okay? And I thought he was going to tell us to get off his property, but he didn't. He was just like, all right, have a great day and like rode off. I showed him my Blackberry haul and was like, no, we're just picking blackberries. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to try to put them into some spectacular Blackberry dessert. And I was reminded of uh, this pineapple crostata that they did. It was like a lime pineapple crostata once. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. I just got a, a notification that said Jerry Springer dies at 79, but I wasn't thinking of the talk show host. I was thinking Jerry Seinfeld, and my brain just almost exploded. I th first of all, I was like, is he 79? But that makes way more sense. Okay. I mean, not to discredit Jerry Springer's um, time that he took up a whole summer of my life when I was 12 watching Jerry Springer. I remember that being so off limits. Like I was like, if my mom knew I was watching these paternity tests, she would fucking lose it. Uh, but Jerry Springer, man, that was like the original reality TV. Just like people barefoot beating each other up. Like I think at the end of the day, that's all people really want from reality TV, but they have to cloak it in like fancy locations and like villas and hosts with British accents being like, and now entering the villa. It was like way before any of that, there was Jerry Springer. I, I didn't see the rest of the notification. It was just an, an alert that says he has died at the age of 79. My God. Um, well, RIP Jerry. Yeah, 27 years. Okay, now I'm just reading you the news. Anyway, okay. Um, what am, What's going on this weekend? It's Friday. It's, it's the weekend. I am going to see my mom. I'm going to take her some food, make her some food, hang out, just chill, get some soups and stews. She's recovering. She's kind of going through um, another treatment that we had a little bit of a setback. So I'm going to go spend some time with her. And then we're getting on a boat for Rip City. And I know I keep talking about shit that doesn't have tickets available. But anyway, it's going to be a really fun time. <laughs> uh, so that's on Sunday. And then it's, it's my birthday week. And I don't know what I'm going to do. But I want to do something fun. I usually am very anti my birthday just because I uh, hate time and I'm aware of how old I am. I'm going to be 37 this year. And that feels insane to me. Not that I think 37 is old necessarily, but just that me personally is turning 37 is very jarring somehow. <laughs> but I, I want to do something fun. And I don't know if that means like a party party which would be kind of cool. I haven't thrown a party in a long time for my own birthday. Maybe ever. I think I tell this story every year, but Jason Stanhope and I share a birthday and Jason always throws himself a really baller birthday party. And then I just go to that and pretend that it's my birthday party, even though it's not. <laughs> but this year, maybe I'll throw one that's actually for me and make a bunch of food and have some drinks or eat some mushrooms or whatever the kids are doing these days. Is it just me or is the whole world on mushrooms? We can talk about that later. You don't have to answer that out loud. Uh, you, it's just something I've noticed where I'm like, wow, cocaine is out. Thanks, fentanyl. Uh, mushrooms are in. I don't really do any of it, so it, it kind of doesn't apply, but I have noticed that that is the party drug of choice or of healing, party party healing mechanism of choice. Let's call it that. It's a, you know, people are healing. They're trying. <laughs> oh man. I still am trying to just recover from thinking Jerry Seinfeld died. Apparently I have a real attachment to Jerry Seinfeld that I was not aware of until I thought I lost him. 
I mean, I don't know. Knowing what I know about Jerry Seinfeld and like growing up in the 90s and being obsessed with Seinfeld, I thought I was obsessed with Jerry, but it turns out I was just obsessed with Larry David. And I didn't know it because then when Curb Your Enthusiasm came out, I was like, oh, it's actually Larry David I'm obsessed with. (laughs) Jerry Seinfeld is uh, iconic and wonderful and very funny. Comedian cars getting coffee is, it's good. It's good. Let's just leave it at that. It's fine. But it's, it's really Larry David's brain that I'm obsessed with. So even so, I think he just is a placeholder in my mind for like, he, he can't be dead. He has to still be alive. There's, there's a lot of people like that weird attachments that people have to celebrities where when they die, people are just crushed. And it's like they didn't know them, but just the comfort of them being alive it really meant a lot. You know, I think there's, there's a few of those where it just always shocks me at the outpouring of people just being like, oh, my God, not you. How am I going to get through my day without Jerry Springer being alive, even though he's not been doing anything for who knows how long not anything that I've seen Um, but I have vivid memories of just making bagel bites and not going outside until like one or two o'clock and just watching Jerry Springer in the summer (laughs) at my house (laughs) before I hit the pool at the country club that's that suburban small town, uh, summertime life, which I honestly is very nostalgic. I think I've talked about this before, but at the pool, I was a lifeguard at the pool in, in our town. And there was a public pool. No, it wasn't a public pool. It was a private pool at the country club, which had a golf course and a pool. And it was like at the time, the center of the universe, like everyone, who was anyone was up there laying out by the pool, listening to music. And as soon as I could be certified, I think I was 13 or 14. No, that's not true. 15. When I was 15 and 16, I was a lifeguard. It was the only job I've ever had that wasn't in food and beverage. And it was like the best job ever. (laughs) I lo- I just loved it because I knew everything that was going on. It turns out I like to know what's going on. I always find myself in a position in whatever city I live in where I'm like, I want to be in the know. And I think most people do that and would like to be in the know, but they'll take it or leave it. I'm like, I will stop at nothing to know what's going on. I'm nosy. I like to be on the scene and I like to know what's what. And so the country club pool in Williston, South Carolina, was 100% that place. And this was pre-cell phones, obviously. This is like mm, uh, 1999, 2000, 2001, those er- that era. And so there's no cell phones. And even if there are, it's like people, they weren't common and you didn't bring them by the pool because you were like, oh no, it d- got too hot and started smoking and melted. And my Nokia cover fell off. But there was a, a line, like a landline outside hanging up on the pool. It's like an outdoor landline, which is also just uh, super appealing to me. I'm like, I want to have, you know, just a phone in a weird place. Like in kitchens, they used to have the chef's like kitchen phone. It would just be hanging up by the chef's office. And that's like the phone that you answer when you need to make orders or talk to the chef or talk to anyone. Like it's just kind of these weird like portals where it's like, oh, here's a phone. <laughs> and the pool phone was like that. Except people would call up like teenagers and adults honestly would call up to be like, is my daughter up there? Or it would be like, hey, who's at the pool? And then you would kind of give them the rundown and they would see if it if like it was hot, if like the scene was hot and they should come up and strut around in their bikini or like I don't know, pretend to play chicken just so you could like put your body on top of someone else's body. Those kind of vibes. <laughs> it's just a, uh, it's a good time. It was like the, yeah, Grand Central Station where I just remember getting up from the chair and having to walk down. Nobody else was allowed to answer it. So the lifeguard had to walk down and answer it. And uh, as a result, you knew exactly what the fuck was going on, who was having an affair, 
who was getting drunk, whose kids were basically latchkey kids that had no parents at home. You just knew it all. And that's how I like it. And to this day, I think part of my curiosity and need to know what's going on on a scene, specifically, I, I, you know, in the past, I've focused it on restaurants. But even when I lived in New York, I was like that. I like to know. Um, and I don't know how all that came from Jerry Springer, but it is what it is. And they recently, I think a few years back, they filled in the pool with concrete and then put grass over it. And so when I drive by there, it's like this little scab it's really sad. You're just like, there used to be a pool there, like you're talking about Atlantis. Like, this, this city used to be above ground <laughs> or whatever. It's just a relic. Like, I uh, can't believe it just got erased, like totally mowed down and then grass planted over it. And then I recently found out they're closing the country club altogether. So not even the golf course portion is open, uh, which is sad. But... Anyway, RIP to the uh, hot girl, late 90s, early 2000s summer. I'm going to bring it back, though. I'm going to hardwire like a line outside in my backyard and just be like, this is the backyard phone. If you need to reach me in my backyard, you call this number and I'll be out there. Or maybe like a kitchen phone. I've been threatening a landline at my house for a long time, but everyone tells me they just get mobbed with uh, solicitors. So I don't know. I don't know how to get that feeling back. That pay phone that you don't have to pay for a feeling. It's a sweet one. It's a sweet time that's just gone by. But yeah, my birthday's coming up. And I've been tossing around the idea. This Am I in a midlife crisis because I'm thinking about getting a tattoo? To be fair, if you don't know me, I already have two tattoos, one of which is so large it could count as like four tattoos. It covers my whole right kind of bicep. Uh, but I've been really thinking about getting a tattoo and and I think I'm going to do it. Spoiler alert, it won't be food. <laughs> like it would never be food. No disrespect. If you have a food tattoo, I'm sure it's the right choice. But... Uh, there's a lot of wrong choices out there. And also it just became kind of ubiquitous with people that worked in food or whatever. But I want to get a, po uh, a podcast tattoo. No, not a podcast tattoo, a clock tattoo. That really also points to midlife crisis. I think I'm w working it out in my head right now that the answer is to not get a tattoo, but it feels like I want one. I just don't know where. If you have any ideas for me, you can email them to me at fnbradio at gmail.com. That's E-F-F-I-N-B-R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com to send me your idea for a tattoo I should get. <laughs> or just to, to weigh in on if you think I should get one at all. It's something I, I really wanted to do for a long time. But then I'm like, nah, not that I regret my tattoos. I actually weirdly am so happy with both of them. I only have two, like I said, but I'm very, very happy with both of my tattoos. And I feel like it's greedy to try to get a third that you're also going to be happy with. I feel like when you push it, you're like, okay, I should have stopped right there. But we'll see. Maybe I'll surprise you. Maybe I'll get, you know, a, a fried egg. Just kidding. I said no food. Oh my God. I would never. Um, but anyway, I gotta, uh, I gotta go. I have to go. I'm going to make a bunch of food for my mom and I got to like hit the grocery store before I hit the road. I hope you have an amazing weekend. If you're coming to Rip City, I'll see you there. I'll see you on the boat. If you want to be a sweet, sweet, you can pack some Dramamine because I told you I get seasick. So who knows what kind of state I'll be in, but maybe I'll see you there. Um, and, and yeah, take a walk in your own, in your own backyard or in your own neighborhood and see what you can forge. Just, just be safe. Don't go past the easement. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.